But the internet failed me yesterday and I couldn't do it that way. So I have to revert back to old faithful PowerPoint. <laughs> the nice thing that I discovered though is that you can customize, you can get custom templates of Microsoft's website now, which is really great. Okay, so like Carol mentioned, um, since 2006 we've been, we've been offering the web design course to communication studies uh, arts foundation phase. Um, students and um, the project basically came about um, when we were approached by uh, Tony Jacobs and you know Fransman from the arts faculty and they felt after these students completed the YAL section in the first um, semester they would like them to continue gaining some more computer skills in the second semester and they approached us and they had this vision about teaching students how to create um, basic static websites. And so we had e-learning, we sat together, put our heads together, and we basically formulated this course for them, specifically for the arts faculty. Um, so uh, we've been offering it for eight years now already. Um, 2013, the other day when I was doing the presentation, I thought to myself, wow, eight years already. <laughs> And yeah, it's, it's basically, it's an eight week course um, and during that time we cover theory, we have practicals um, and we have assessments. Um, so theory, uh, principles of design, uh, contrast, alignment, proximity, layout, color use, all of those issues are covered in the theory classes. We have practical sessions where they actually write programming. We take, teach them very basic HTML coding and then we, we show them an application in which you build a website. And then because you know that nowadays um, web design crosses multiple disciplines, we also teach them very basic graphic design. So it's almost like a crash course in how to um, create graphics from scratch, um, how to edit graphics, cropping, resizing, and that kind of thing. Um, so the outcome is to equip the, the students with the basic skills to create a basic static website, um, programming, very basic programming, and then the image editing part as well. Um, online tools, yeah. So we practice what we preach, so we also make use of all the different tools that the learning management system has on offer. Um, for those of you who remember Professor Terry Keats, who was our former director of ICS, he always used to say, we must move away from the stand-up comedian median approach to learning. So therefore, we use all the tools in the system to teach our students. Um, so, um, we actually, in 2006, we, we used KNG. For those of you who remember KNG, your next year, we then moved on to e-teaching, and we are now on Sakai. As of this year, we are on um, Ikamba. That's on the Sakai platform. Um, and I must admit, Sakai has been the best so far. Um, so, we previously, we we use the file manager, we are now using the course resources. So we update, um, we upload PowerPoint presentations, um, course resources, videos, everything in the, the course resources for our students. Um, we use discussion forums, so we post topics on there that the students need to discuss about the course. Um, announcements is working really great for us, so we send out the announcements there's a weekly task that we need to complete. There's an assessment <coughs> happening next week. Announcements, really great tool. Um, we also make use of uploadable assignments. So students get the weekly task every week after the lesson. There's a weekly task. And then they can complete that in a Word document and just upload it to us and we receive it and grade it on the system. 
And in assessments, um, the MCQ, uh, like I mentioned, we use KNG, we use e-teaching, and in the past when we have um, our end of term MCQ assessment, then the system many times failed us, that would crash, and then you'd have to run around and get one of those sheets, and the, the students would have to do it paper-based. I'm glad to say last week we wrote our assessment in Tantana teaching lab. In the opposite lab, nursing students were writing at the same time, and the system didn't, it, it wasn't slow. Wonderful. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. And everything just ran really smoothly, and we so glad for that. Um, so these are the figures since 2006. You can see that in 2006 we started with 120. Uh, by 2012 we have now 212 um, students that's doing that course. Um, and even this year, I think I put it on that drop, yeah. A slightly climb 193, but the average is about 200 students nowadays that, that we have that's doing the course. Um, challenges, yeah, like I mentioned previously, it was the, the stability <coughs> of the learning management system, but this year everything has just gone really smoothly. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I heard some of the previous speakers speak as well, access to computers and the internet, we still find that all students don't have access to computers and the internet. We had, even had a case where um, a lot of the work that they do is group work and the students actually came with the assignment written on paper and asked us please can you mark this because we just don't have access to computers and you can't deny the student they did the assessment you have to look at it, you have to at least give them that um, and lastly uh, software one of the challenges when we started offering a course in 2006 uh, we used Microsoft's front page and it was another reason for the students to come to us and say but I don't have front page at home they don't have front page installed in the labs so what do you do? so what we've done is we've identified open source programs that can achieve the same thing as you could in front page so we used NVU, uh, NVU for some time and we discovered another program now called PageBreeze which is also an uh, alternative to, to Microsoft's front page. And then also when we do the image editing within the graphic design with, uh, we use a program called Artweaver, and there's also one called GIMP, uh, which are editing tools for images. And so we, we aim to make this course purely open source, because then the students don't have that excuse that they don't have access because we even give them the software um, if they come to us because there's no licensing um, problems that you have around that. Okay, and that is it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry? No, we haven't tried that, but we can definitely look into it. Uh, and the hosting of that, we host all those uh, we, we don't actually host them. Uh, it's just, they, they just, it's more about learning the skill. <laughs> we normally uh, put it all on a DVD and give it to the lecturer at the end, and then they, they look at the writing style, the content that they wrote for it. Um, I'm from the materials development team of eLearn, so we do a lot of multimedia <coughs> and last month we assisted a lecturer at School of Public Health, Suraya Mohammed, and she had to do an e-poster and they recommended that she use Prezi and we did do a, a, a presentation using Prezi and 
it's, it's Web 2.0, so you have to be online. Um, other than that, it's, it's a really great tool. Um, it's, it's flash based, so it has that smooth interactivity and the anima animations and templates that they provide you with. Um, it does look a lot better than a PowerPoint. Um, if, the, if we can just have the stability part sorted, then I would say it's definitely the route to go. Go opting into Power Web, but yeah. we are going to now, because we have to plan for next year, 